there's a few ways that this has been said. Make your mess your message, make your test your testimony, find the blessing in every lesson. There's always a positive and a negative situation. There are all these different ways that it's been said. And I think people really need to grab a hold of that. I, I feel like we have become so negative, so so sad, so downcast, and just so forgetful of our our true power, our worthiness, our love. And I just think about how we go through things in life and we're told just to be victims. We're not told the positive and the negative that, yes, this happened to you and I'm so sorry it did because terrible things have happened to me. But you could take that, that, that mess and you could make it your message and help impact other people in the process. I know some people don't resonate with this. And if they don't, you don't have to continue on with this video. This is for the people like me who have gone through things and have made it their sort of mission that everything that they want to learn, everything that I want to learn or everything that I learn, I want to share it with other people so that maybe one, one person may be impacted by it. One person may get a nugget. One person might forgive. One person might decide to move forward in their soul passion or to remove themselves from situations and people that are not in, in alignment of what they want to be or who they want to be. And that requires work. That requires deciding to journal that requires starting to reflect on the things that we've done as well as the things that have been done to us. It, it makes us question things. It makes us drive deeper. It makes us look at ourselves from a different perspective because none of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. And I think we forget that sometimes we're so quick to judge others, but we forget that a lot of times what we're judging others on is stuff that we judge ourselves about. And I just keep thinking like if we could just, Take a moment to say, what I've been through, if I decide to heal, what does that feel like? Will healing feel better? Will healing be uncomfortable? Will healing make me any less than? Or will healing be hard because we don't want to release? We don't want to stop being the victim. We don't want to stop hiding. We don't want to stop doing the comfort things that we do because we went through these traumas. That's what I, comes to my head because I think that's how I used to be. I used to be really like, oh, okay, this happened to me, so I can't. I can't do this or I can't be this. And now I'm looking at it differently. This happened to me so that I could relate to someone else who it's happened to. This happened to me so that I could go out there and still let people know that, okay, I haven't been through the exact thing you've been through, but I've been through something similar and I was able to make it. And then other people's stories that I've heard, I carry those with me too. Because then when I hear those stories and I meet someone, I'm like, hey, you know, so-and-so, I don't have to say the name of the person, but so-and-so or this channel, this person spoke about this. Maybe you could look at their channel. Maybe you could read their book and you could find healing too. And there's power in that. There's power in your mess. There's power in your testimony, in your tests. There's power in your lessons because the lessons aren't really made when you're in the peaks. You learn the lessons when you're in the valleys, when you're going through the trenches, when the things that disturb you, the uncomfortable things come to life. I think about how I keep doing these things. I keep doing these things that make me uncomfortable. Every day I try to do them because I know that the more I sit in the discomfort, the more my body will realize it's not that bad. It's not that bad to be in the discomfort. We could survive the discomfort. Matter of fact, we can thrive and be better in the discomfort. And I keep training my mind to think that way, training my mind to think that way. I keep training my mind to see when there is things that go wrong, how can I fix that in my head? How could I say, how could I have done that situation a little bit better? Okay, you know, okay. How could, I, how could I have looked at this in a different perspective? Or should I stop judging this individual or speaking ill of this individual? Because the very thing that I'm speaking ill of in that person is the thing that I am seeing in myself. Like they're mirroring back what I am feeling, they're mirroring it back to me. It's a lesson I need to learn. Or in relationship, when am I going to stop this cycle? I already went through these things. Now it's time to see these patterns and release them with love and keep on going. And I just challenge you, whoever reads, or sorry, whoever watches this video, I don't care if you've been the abused or the abuser. There is forgiveness in that. You can decide to change today, to move forward. And it's not gonna be easy. People aren't gonna just accept you automatically, but you can change, you can grow. And I'm saying this with so much love because I've been a person who I've seen terrible people who I think were terrible human beings flip their lives around 
if anybody can do it with a little bit of love, a little bit of love and a lot of determination. And people are not going to resonate with you. People aren't going to love you for it. People are going to hate you for it probably. But if you know yourself and you know where you're going, you know your mission, you know you're making your mess a message for someone else who's went through the very things that you went through, then it doesn't matter. Because so many of us, we're like, we have this passion, this goal, this purpose, and we're hiding from it because we're scared. We're scared what somebody's going to say. We're scared that that a person's going to leave a comment. And this was me, but now I don't care. I was put on this earth to be disruptive. Like I think about myself from as a kid, I've always been someone who is like, I don't want to be a face in the crowd. I want to face the crowd. I don't want to be the sheep. I want to be the person leading the pack or at least in there thinking differently. I don't want to be the person who is just going with the status quo because they said I have to. I'm the person who would question when you and were in school, like, what do you mean by that? Because I wanted to think for myself. I didn't want someone else thinking for me. So be whatever that version of yourself that you know in your heart. And if you don't know right now, you need to fill into your body again because you might be like me where we, we sometimes leave our body and get too much into our heads. Fill into your body and do it over and over again and look for those answers. I'm telling you, your intuition, your heart, it will give you, your body, it will give you the answers. God gave you that gift and God will speak to you too through that, those means or through other people. But if you start looking for the answer, the answer will come. If you start seeing it in your mind, you could hold it in your hand. And I, that's all I really have to say. I just, I just keep thinking to myself like, what if? A generation of people took their mess and made it their message. And I can't remember the person who said that quote. I'll write it down below. I'm going to look it up. But I just never forget it. Make your mess your message. Make your test your testimony. I think one of them was a woman named Robin. I think that's who it was. But yes, you guys stay blessed. Stay amazing. Stay radiant. I'll see you in the next video with all my love. Lana.